Senators who are investigating Apple. Remember, we talked on the bonus show and it's been in the news how Apple is being questioned about their creative accounting and business organization techniques where they basically are paying far less taxes than they would if they truly reported the income that they make as an American company within the U.S. You know all about that investigation. Well aware of that. It turns out that two senators serving on the subcommittee that was grilling Apple executives over their offshore tax practices actually own Apple stock, either directly or through their spouse. And uh, I, I have so much to say about this, but just to give you a little background, one of these individuals is Senator Heidi Heitkamp, a, a Democrat from North Dakota. And she owns the most Apple stock of the 14 members of the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee's permanent subcommittee on investigations. Her holdings are somewhere between a quarter million and a half million dollars worth of Apple stock. And that was in a statement that covers 2012. And she was one of six committee members who didn't even show up to the hour long hearing during which the Apple CEO defended the company against accusations that they were dodging taxes. Now, regardless, the senator's stock holdings, according to a spokeswoman, don't pose any kind of a conflict. They said, uh, what is the quote here? They said her position on the committee is in no way impacted by her personal financial holdings. I feel like there should be an LOL after that. Like, it's just such obvious BS. So, so absurd to believe this. Right, guys, we have to believe lobbying doesn't work. Lawmakers would behave. We often hear lawmakers behave identically when it comes to passing laws or not passing laws or what laws they propose, whether they did or didn't receive a pile of money from particular lobbyists or companies. Nobody believes that, do they, Natan? No. In fact, I would go further and say the reason why uh, decisions like Citizens United and in general people don't seem to be as outraged about this is because they couch it in these terms. They say, well, hold on a second. Hey, I just invested in some stocks. It has nothing to do. No one's pulling a gun to my head and saying you have to vote this way, right. which is, strictly speaking, obviously true. However, it's also true that money talks and you don't need that's the beauty of the system. You don't need it to be uh, coercive in the traditional sense of holding a gun to your head or actually, you know, a CEO from a company telling a politician how to vote. They don't even have to Certainly. because the aides are saying, hey, look, we should make sure we don't uh, lose this campaign money in the next election cycle. The money speaks for itself in many ways. Yes. But we also question whether or not Apple should be under investigation for this separate issue, separate issue. But yeah, but this is another reason why lawmakers, as many have suggested, shouldn't be allowed to at least hold individual stocks. Right. You can hold a mutual fund or, you know, certain things, or maybe there's a specific list of things that as a lawmaker we, we can identify would not uh, cr create apparent conflicts of interest. But the reality is this is not really a problem with Apple or with these individual members of Congress. Right. I mean, it's, it's this kind of twisted tax code combined with no real provisions to prevent these conflicts of interest. It's the system which allows this. And of course, the people who make the system are benefiting from it. So why would they ever change it? They yeah. would. Good luck getting Congress to pass a law saying they can't hold stock. <laughs>